So it's the summer solstice. It brings to mind images of the cycles of the sun and the moon and the interplay between the earth and the sky to make and create and move all living life. In the cultural beliefs of various communities and the relationships between these celestial and divine beings are often described as siblings or parent and child or as lovers. And I mean, even in talking about the great mother, mother earth, um, that is a relationship. And not only in the summer solstice, but also being Father's Day, I felt that honoring the relationships and how those change and shift in the cycles as the seasons uh, was something that was important to remember. Uh, my teacher, Mary Sissip Genius, uh, taught me a story about the beginnings of humanity in Anishinaabe cultural teachings. And she taught us that humans were the little brother of all other living beings, since he was created last and had the most to learn. And throughout our human experience, we understand this interplay and interconnectedness with these core elements of life and the seasons and cycles and the passage of time and the change that those things bring. These relationships, we all experience these changes in relationships, responsibility to, and reliance on others. We may start our lives out as children who may be developing, or <clears throat> sorry, dependent on adults in our lives to be cared for, to learn, to grow. And as we get older, we begin to also offer support and ideas and care and so on to others in our life. We may care for children uh, at some point or elder adults or other community members that they then depend upon us. And it's this flex and flow back and forth of interdependent reliance. When we speak about the U principle of interconnected web of which we all are a part, this is what I think of. I envision that web or a weaving even, and they rely on the previous strand to lay its foundation for the next. And in turn, the next strand depends on the, its, the previous for its foundation. The energy and exchange continues to move back and forth one to the other. And in many uh, retreats that I've led or been a part of, we do an activity, which I would have done here, but there's a lot of people, uh, so maybe in another time. Uh, but we make a web. And when you have participants, they stand in a circle and we throw, oh, or gently hand, <laughs> a ball of yarn uh, back and forth between our members until everyone has at least one strand in their hand. And then we move and tug and maybe let go of certain strands and bring them back up. Or what if a strand breaks and what do we do? And how do those strands and that movement send ripples through the whole web? It affects everyone. And those ripples can change and shift the pattern and affect how others are holding the web, make certain <coughs> strands more taut and others loose. And they can affect how the the others connect and the pattern of the web, that web of community. So leading up to the summer solstice season, as many of you know about me, much of my time is spent in the garden. And in the last few years, I've been learning about and trying out something called companion planting. Who's heard of companion planting? Yeah, yeah. oh good, all right. Probably know lots more than me. I will talk to many people after. <laughs> um, and in the last few years, I've been learning uh, about what's, you know, what are some good combinations that are helpful or uh, some that are folklore, some that have some also science as well or some that are just pretty. Uh, and so let me just explain for those you know, few that don't know about it. So let's say there's a particular plant that you do wanna grow. You're like, this one, really wanna make sure this one grows well. 
but to give it the best chance at growing healthy and strong, um, getting pollinated, um, bearing fruit, uh, or just to keep desire, undesired pests away, um, you plant other plants around it that are beneficial. I've been planting um, tomatoes, and I plant basil and marigolds with them. And these are to keep away certain harmful insects and to help with the taste of the tomatoes and also because it looks pretty. Um, in this way, I'm intentionally cultivating a plant community and it benefits all of them. The marigolds keep away underground insects and attract pollinators. The basil is, uh, repels certain harmful, more airborne insects and invites pollinators. And uh, of course, it's also great to add tomato dishes. So easy access for harvesting. Um, and the tomato provides shade for the basil and the marigolds so they don't get burned by the sun. They each contribute and offer what they can to their little plot. And together, they can be more likely to weather difficult times throughout, like we've been experiencing lack of rain here. Those plants have been doing amazingly together. Now we can't companion, uh, companion plant for everything. Sometimes harmful insects or weather and climate situations will get, still get the plants that we've hard, hard worked to grow and, and against all our planning. Um, but isn't that the way of life and relationships? Our communities can help us and we help others live a little better than we would have on our own. Our communities can help us and we can help others. But this doesn't mean that we still don't experience difficulties and challenges and hardships. We all actively engage in cultivating our own companion and planting in our own lives. We choose what relationships we want to plant close to us, who's in our inner circle, planted in the same garden bed. Um, what relationships need boundaries and maybe distance, which plants maybe don't get along or uh, don't share nutrients well. <laughs> and uh, we offer and receive support, encouragement, and love to weather those hard times, i.e. some plants that offer shade or keep away pests, add other nutrients for the benefit of others. The time of summer solstice is a time for back and forth of balance, of that push and pull and that ebb and flow of energies. The sun has been growing in strength, but it will soon also lessen slowly. And it, this in turn affects and moves and changes the responses of the earth and the plants and animal life and our weather and so forth. This is the ebb and flow of interconnection, of relationships and of community. <laughs> 